No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it wrong. Podcast contains mature content. The views and opinions expressed by the host are not those of the host. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub, Up, the Smack and Raw podcast. I am your host, the patron saint of podcasting, the warden Matt Ritter, and I am here with my co-hosts this evening. Uh, first and foremost, the first lady of the Public Enemies podcast, All Elite Keeks, making her debut here on Smack and Raw and on Pornhub. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You, thank you. And you know her, you love her. She's here more than my other co-host, Vince, who obviously is not here this week. Uh, we may have to do another Pornhub poppy race uh, going into the end of the year. She is the host of the Sheely Showcase, Inside the Mind of, In the Crowd, and Storytime with Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay. That's me. I'm here. At, how, and now how you're, you're back. do I sound? <laughs> Just a little sick. I am. There is congestion all up in my head. Well, I hope but you I'm feel here. better. And I, 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 I listen. No one. I, I, I fought her on this. All right. This woman bought a plane ticket to fly back to make sure she made two shows for tonight. And I told her she didn't need to. Like I said, listen. Me and Keeks got this. We're gonna have fun. It'll be entertaining. I appreciate it. You don't need to do that. And she did it anyway. She flew herself back to be here for these shows because she she's awesome. I know that's right. Super yeah. woman. Uh, my heart. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and you're going to do two shows sick with me, you know, yeah. dealing well, with that. But we'll, we'll have a little break. Yeah, a little break. And maybe if I'm still sick on Monday, on Monday. <laughs> We got Will in the chat. Will, how's it going? Um, I want to thank everyone who's watching us. If you're either watching us live on twitch.tv slash creation world, uh, please throw us a follow if you have not. And if you have Amazon Prime Gaming, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account uh, or just an Amazon Prime account. You have Prime Gaming. You can link that to your Twitch account and you get a free sub every month that you should give to your favorite podcaster or Twitch streamer anyone on there it costs you absolutely nothing and it supports the people that you love to watch and listen to and let them entertain you so please go do that and i would i would absolutely love it if it was me but there are plenty of entertaining podcasts and content creators out there that you can show some love to so just make sure you give somebody some love and you don't let that go to waste every month you can also check us out live on youtube.com slash creation world because creation world is the banner under which the smack and raw podcast and everything else we do exists um and there it's free to like, to subscribe, to comment, to flick that bean up top, that little notification bell, and get notified every time we go live, whether it is now Saturdays uh, for Smacking It Raw. Uh, the show we're doing immediately after this, Getting Off, which is every other week-ish, or uh, Monday through Friday for the Creation Conversation, where you can see me and Katie again, if you're not going to get enough of us tonight, on Monday at lunch, talking all that nerdish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a Patreon if you want to throw us a little bit of support. For one dollar, you get two awesome shows. And it's not just the newest episodes, it's the entire back catalog. So you can go check me and my boy Travis out talking WCW. We start with the very first Nitro and run all the way through a pay-per-view each show. We are currently the latest episode dropped for Starcade 1997. And if you know, that is Sting versus hogan probably the biggest pay-per-view in the history of wcw we are starting to get into thunder and all that crazy fun shit so now's a great time to hop on and check out and go back and check everything out but that's not all you get you also get travis and mara if you're a comic book fan breaking down dc animated films 
So they've got Multiverse over there where they talk all of the animated DC shows. They're going to start getting into some Marvel here too soon. So, you know, if you're if you're more of a Marvel head, that's coming. But everything that they do is over there. And it only costs you $1 for both shows. That's two bonus shows and the entire back catalogs for $1 a month, plus new episodes every month. $1. That's a great deal. What up, Justin? I think I plugged everything. So, Katie. You were you were here in spirit last week. You you made sure you you came through on vacation and sent me all the news and rumors. Uh, but you're here now, so I, I I'm turning the floor over to you. What's been going on? Uh, so I I'm be honest. I didn't fully go back and look at like a bunch of news. So I just tried to find stuff that was kind of relevant and happened within the past few days. Um, one of which. <clears throat> we already saw in SmackDown the commentary teams being switched up a little bit. So now Michael Cole is pulling double duty and also doing pay-per-views. He's on Raw with Wade Barrett and on SmackDown with Kevin Patrick and Corey Graves. Poor Kevin. <laughs> they work in the shit out of Michael Cole. I, yeah. I, I, I get the feeling. I understand. <laughs> Hey. hey, you work the shit out of yourself. I, oh, I know. This is all on me. I'm just saying. I understand Michael Cole. He's a workhorse. How do you guys feel about Kevin Patrick on commentary? Do you think like they need Michael Cole over there? Is he that bad? It's new. It, it, his voice just it doesn't fit wrestling. But not saying that he's not good. It just doesn't fit wrestling. Okay. Uh, he, I mean. Like, so the stuff I was reading, like, when they were um, changing it, it did say they were still, like, high on Kevin Patrick. Like, they still had faith in him, just not as much as they needed. I still think if they moved him down to NXT and put Vic up with Corey, then Michael Cole wouldn't have to do both shows. You know what I'm saying? True. Speak of the devil, my best friend... (laughs) The man who created Creation Conversation and Creation World and why we even have a podcast. Lord cuss a lot, Travis Pointer, in the chat. What's going on, Travis? <coughs> he did roll through uh, last week just to say hi to Jizzy. Not to, like, not to see me. Yeah. It was fuck me. He just wants to say hi to Jizzy. Well, because Jizzy's awesome and he sees you every week. No, he doesn't. We He has stopped scheduling us together. He's sick of my ass. He's done. <laughs> well, you've been friends for how long? You said like 20 years? Uh, since third grade and we're both... 36 now, so a while. So math, yeah. Exactly. I'm not going to try it. Um, <laughs> uh, Kyrie, or formerly known as Kyrie Sane, is 99% coming back to WWE. Uh, I guess she her stardom contract is up, and she's kind of done being over there. So... I guess they talked and they finalized everything. I'm not sure when she's going to come back, but probably very soon. It makes sense with the whole um, money issue that's going on in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they more money. You know, we got to survive. So I, I see that. I knew she wasn't going to stay there long. The way that she was booked out there, I was like, she's probably just doing this to pass time. Um, maybe something else will come up. Um, I really thought, honestly, she was going to go to Impact for some reason, but her returning to WWE, I'm not mad at it. Um, like I said, more money because it is a money issue out there. So makes sense. And, you know, whatever, whatever makes her happy and what's best for her, go ahead. You know, she don't have to go to NXT though. Just put her in straight oh. to the court. I thought that was the tease that Asuka gave when she said she had a plan for SummerSlam that maybe Kyrie was going to be coming down to help her out or help even the odds in case there was a cash in or something, but we did not see that. So, no. Well, I mean, well, we saw cash in. Uh, we didn't see Kyrie. JJ, uh, any night feels right with me. Ew. <laughs> okay. Um, also, everyone's favorite person. Nia Jax is supposedly coming back to WWE. She's currently training down in Florida at Devon School. 
is what I saw. I'm not sure, again, not sure when, but she has gotten in phenomenal shape. Like, she has been working on that for a few years. She looks great. I mean, she did look great before, obviously, but it's a personal thing. We, we say the same thing about Tony Storm every time. If it's what you want to do and you're comfortable, then <clears throat> that's it. <laughs> um, they need more women in the... <laughs> <laughs> they need more women in the locker room, uh, especially to SmackDown. So she'll make a good addition to SmackDown because they need more heels uh, on that program. But yeah. um, as long as she uh, got better with her moves, then I'm all for it. I hope that she worked on the things that we saw problems in um, when she was an active wrestler. Um, you know, beautiful lady. Um so yeah, hopefully we see better, like a better Nia, uh, Nia Jax. So. Yeah. I, I I also do. That is correct. I don't have um, emojis. I feel like well, I you're not. At this point, l- listen, you have refused to join the channel as an official member. We have talked about this. Fair. We can't Fair. just give you. Vince doesn't have emojis, and technically he's, he's on the website. Off well, he wasn't looked like. <laughs> I want getting off emojis for me. That I've earned. We had a soundbite for you, but you didn't like that. We had to get rid of that. <laughs> hey, hey. Emojis. <laughs> yeah, I want emojis, damn it. Uh, um, I'm down I'm down for Nia Jax. Uh, personally, like they need a woman in this bloodline. Um bring her in, put her in. If because Jimmy and Jay are gonna be doing their thing, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know what Solo's doing. We don't really know what Roman's doing until probably Cody at WrestleMania 40 if he even shows up. Oh, but you've got AJ and Mi Chin. You've got Cross, who we'll talk about, uh, maybe, um, and Scarlett. Like, you've got pairings where should, you know, because Mi Chin will get in. She'll do some shit, right? Yeah. So if we need to do, like, Solo and Nia in a tag team match, versus AJ and Mi Chin, I'd be down for that. Something like that. Mix that up a little bit. Get AJ in there. I'd love to see Solo go against AJ. I think that'd be fun um, if we get there sometime. So, uh, yeah, um, do that. Um, you need to, yeah, you need to go to sleep, Travis. I have not been there in 24 hours. Yes, the Goldberg soundbite, Reek, but we weren't going to say that. Wow. All you have to do is go listen to Inside the Mind of Katie, and uh, no. you get all the context you need. No, I, I think they're good, actually. I don't think they're really good. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, that episode may not exist. I might just delete it. Boy, if I'm feeling a little frisky one day. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to. Um, injuries have been running wild again. Uh, obviously, Kevin's. Kevin Owens is injured. Sami Zayn is injured. Uh, if you saw the big uh, ball on his elbow, uh, John Cena had the same thing. I think it necessary. I think it just has to be drained. I don't think it necessarily requires surgery. Uh, but that's why he kind of got like taken out of the main event of Raw again. I didn't watch anything. This is all just stuff I am seeing <laughs> as I go. You're doing a great job. Yeah, no, thank. You. I really, I'm really trying. Um, I didn't know they was injured. Yeah, it's it's not like gonna be like detrimental to oh. Sammy. Like Kevin's out for quite a bit of time. I think Kevin was his ribs, but Sammy is like I said. I think just needs to get drained and he should be fine. What Listen, they gonna do I with hate, them tag titles? I, I I hate to do this, Katie. I I, I hate to do this, but uh, what? Here on the Smack and Raw podcast, we have a conspiracy theory, and it is called the Curse of Riddle. Oh, I know. Everyone that rolls with Matt Riddle <laughs> has bad shit happen to them. All right? We here because I've been saying it. I have been <laughs> saying it. See, I don't fuck with Matt Riddle. I always say he's not my kind of white people. Like, I, I do, he's not. I don't <laughs> yeah. fuck with him. I can't stand the man. It, maybe it's because our names are really close, and I have been attacked online because people thought I was him. And some other shit. Neither here nor there. There is the curse of Riddle, and everyone that fucks with Riddle, something bad happens. Sammy and KO, it was delayed. And I'm, I'm going to say that's because Sammy or uh, KO didn't really fuck with Matt Riddle. Sammy did. So it was delayed, yeah. but now they're both out. They're both hurt. Curse of Riddle in effect, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 
So what they gonna do though with the bills? They gotta do something. <laughs> well, that uh, that leads me perfectly to my next injury. Uh, this one hurts. Sonya Deville tore her ACL. Oh, yes. Uh, in that stupid fucking tag match that they had to have on SmackDown with Charlotte and Bianca because they needed that tag. Can they coexist? Fuck right off because you hurt Sonya. I don't know how long she's out. She did just have surgery. She did just post about it. But I will say I give Chelsea Green hella props because she's taking this Karen gimmick that she has and is uh, basically doing tag team auditions online. And letting people audition to be her tag team partner. This would be a perfect time for Billy Kay to come back. With, all, with Billy all that. Uh, Billy Kay is pregnant. Oh, yeah, well, I was going to say. So Peyton could come back because Peyton already had the baby. Yeah. Right. yeah. Peyton, Peyton is good to wrestle and everything. Uh, I mean, their podcast did just come back. I don't know if like they talk about any of that in there, but. Yeah, so it's another tag team out. Those those women's tag titles are cursed. They are really, they have been cursed. We've been saying it. It's cursed. I hate it. Just destroy it out already. Destroy the belts. The- and then on top of that, the tag team titles that weren't cursed, which were the women's NXT tag team titles, they went and combined those, so we don't even have that anymore. Now we've just got a set of cursed titles that everyone that touches – Kind of like everyone that teams with Matt Riddle ends up having bad shit happen to them. Like it, <laughs> and it's because they didn't treat Trinity and Mercedes properly. If they had just done right by them, we wouldn't be going through this, but here we are. But here we are. It's crazy. And last thing I have. <clears throat> Rhea Ripley and Buddy Matthews get engaged and every woman and man hearts shatter. And mine, mainly, it's me. Aww. I'm everyone. I love Ray Ripley so much. It's not fair. But <laughs> Buddy said, fuck y'all. I'm sick of these memes. I'm clutching my woman down. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. He said, you know what? I'm down on bended knee right now. Mm-hmm. As he should be. It was on a beach. Her ring is beautiful. Good for them. Yeah. I am very happy for them. I'm just trying to figure out if Dom's going to be watching the honeymoon from the closet or if Buddy is. I don't know where. <laughs> How that's gonna work out? Um, somebody's gonna be in the closet watching whatever's going on during that honeymoon. Because Bria doesn't go anywhere without Dom. It is what it is. I'm gonna be in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you saw she. We talked about it. She, you've been asking to get stepped on for a while. She's doing it in photo shoots now. I can't believe you missed that SummerSlam opportunity. If only I got to SummerSlam a day early. Oh, don't worry. I'll talk about fucking SummerSlam. Okay. <clears throat> that line was, they said that line was long to get stepped on. <laughs> I, I, I've been at the front of the line. <laughs> Lucky bastards. Um, would, would you like to start off the show, Keeks, uh, with the first spit and or swallow? No, y'all go. Y'all go. Okay. Katie, <laughs> spit or swallow. I am spitting my time at SummerSlam. <clears throat> Let me explain why. Uh, I did make a vlog. I did uh, edit it and everything. I just haven't put it up because I'm lazy and I just got home yesterday. Uh, so it'll be up soon. I was on the floor. I was expecting, you know, to not be able to see. I knew that. No, I had motherfuckers standing on chairs. A grown-ass man telling me to go fuck myself because I told him to sit his ass down after standing the entire show. Um, just people don't know how to bathe or put deodorant on. I was around... I, I was bas- It was basically just men around me and they all smelled me. It was disgusting. I wish I was like this for Detroit so I couldn't really smell anything. But it was just like an awful time. I paid $100 for an Uber to get back to my hotel. And after walking a mile and a half away from Ford Field, I ended up at the MGM Grand. Of course, I ended up at the casino. I did gamble. I did. And? I lost. <laughs> but I was also distraught, crying, stressed, running on no sleep, 
trying to get back to my hotel in time to make a flight at five in the morning to get to the beach where this happened. Uh, so yeah, straight up did not have a good time. <laughs> Disappointing ending to the night in the show. Yeah, I was, you know, I was there. I was like, main event, Jay Uso, he gonna get it done. And tell me how this was a tribal combat match. No family member was supposed to get involved. Tell me why two family members got involved in the match. Bad oh, <laughs> it was worse than that. <laughs> Listen, I know you think you got sick at the beach, but I'm going to say all that nasty, musty wrestling fan shit got in your airways, and that's why you're all... All types of fucked up. That plus the negative energy just being there and around all that shit. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, thankfully for Payback, which is in, like, three weeks at this point, my hometown, I don't have to go far. I just got to drive 20 minutes downtown. I got a nice seat. I'm not on the floor. I'm waiting for them to put the media shit up so I can apply, and they're not. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a much better experience. Oh, that's another spoiler. Um, I don't know if any, I don't know if any of you guys saw the Rikishi thing. Yeah. yeah. This dumb... Whoever made that... Mm-mm, fired. Immediately <laughs> fired. Like, how the fuck y'all going to screw that up that quickly? <laughs> And it's the fact that he retweeted it, like... He saw nothing wrong with it either. He said, no, nah, retweet. Sir, your sons, all th- the three of your however many sons have been fighting for months on end. And you said, oh yeah, I'm going to do a meet and greet, but like, huh, surprise, I won't be at payback. <laughs> Terrible. Spitting that too. Yeah. I'm going to spit on SummerSlam too. Uh, only due to uh the main event um we're tired of the same sequences well me i am with uh how roman matches are um it's never a clean one it hasn't been a clean one in a long time and it is getting very very repetitive and it's getting tiring um i heard that he's injured uh, I'm not sure on how serious it is, but they showed the spot where he may have injured himself. Jay Uso did a suicide dive, and I don't know why would he turn his body when somebody's doing a suicide dive. Like I don't know what that was about. That was a mis- miscommunication there. Um, but also on SummerSlam, though, I do want to swallow the women's match, uh, the, tr- uh, the triple threat match between um, Bianca, Charlotte and Oscar, uh, they was wrestling. Uh, I want to say this SummerSlam, it was a lot of in ring storytelling in this SummerSlam. I know rest, WWE fans was not used to wrestling, wrestling, but this was the most wrestling, wrestling WWE has done in a minute. Uh, the like the ring time, like the in ring time they got was longer, and I know y'all was getting dried out and tired. I saw the tweet there, but I was like, oh, this is going too long. And I'm like, me being this AEW fan, I'm like, we used to this. Why y'all come on? This is wrestling, wrestling now. Well, yeah, because Tony Khan books six hour pay per views with 26 matches on the card. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we used to have them though. It's been a long time. It it's is, been it a is. long time. Um, no, I. I'm a little bit like I watch wrestling. I I started watching wrestling for the stories, not the in ring. I've learned to appreciate the in ring. Uh, Black and gold NXT did a lot of that for me, like seeing what they were going out there and doing. I really got into the in ring work of it, which is why I I cover both AEW and WWE because I do enjoy a lot of AEW. A lot of things you enjoy about AEW, I probably don't. That's cool. But, you know, like I said, I'll be nice to your boy today. Oh, leave him alone. <laughs> leave him alone. Leave that man alone. You know, he just had his anniversary where he showed up in my hometown, Chicago, confronted The Rock, made his debut on Raw, one of the biggest moments in wrestling history. So that that just happened. That just came through. That Shout was out. like the day I came stopped back. watching WCW. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll we'll roll with this bloodline thing though because uh, we continued that on SmackDown as well. Um. And you guys are spitting the ending of SummerSlam. I'm I'm spitting the excuse that 
Jimmy felt that he had to keep his brother from becoming tribal chief because his brother wasn't going to be able to handle being tribal chief. And he would be like, listen, that's your family. That's your brother. It is your job to not only support him, but then make sure he doesn't become an asshole like Roman. You're supposed to be by his side guiding that man, not keeping him from these opportunities because you don't think he can handle it. That's not how that works. That's not how family does shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on in that family. Daddy don't show up when the three brothers are fighting. And now all that. But anyway, that all happened. Roman's talking shit. He gets kicked in the mouth. Solo goes for an attack, gets taken out. Roman tries to rally, ends up getting laid out by Jay with a spear. Jimmy's already walking up the ramp because Jay wasn't giving him any time. And Jay's like, hey, come back, come back. Jimmy comes back. Jay super kicks him on the ramp and then says, fuck it. Fuck WWE. Fuck SmackDown. Fuck this family. I'm out and leaves through the crowd. Gone. Um, you're missing a key part of that. He said, deuces, ooses. And I want a <laughs> shirt now. Deuces. Damn it. I want it. That's the only part might, I saw. <laughs> if you don't get a shirt, I might just make deuces, ooses the name of this episode for you, Katie. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you so much. <laughs> just for me. Do you uh, know why that happened though? I, I haven't really been keeping up, keeping up like that, but I was just curious. Like, do you have any theories as to why? Oh. Why they had him just say fuck it and act yeah. like he's leaving? Um I know there's been a lot of talk that Jimmy and Jay uh have wanted to have a one on one match. So I think this is gonna be kind of like Jay going away so Jimmy can get some shine. Because, I mean, Jimmy came out and said, like, this wasn't for you. I didn't do it for you, Roman. Fuck you. Like, it's still fuck you. I just did it because I didn't want my brother to become like you. And which, again, shitty excuse. So this might be because Jay got his time when Jimmy was hurt. Jimmy never really got his time to shine as a singles guy. He's main event Jey Uso. Jimmy's just the other brother at this point. Like, they're, they're one of the greatest tag teams of all time, blah, blah, blah. But this might just be Jimmy's chance to shine a little bit, you know, run against Roman, run against Solo show that he's in the same league as his brother before they put him one-on-one -on -one so everyone doesn't just assume Jay's going to win off the bat, you know? Oh, God. That's yeah. my theory. Um, Allison is right. His I did see something about his contract being up soon, and they did move him to the alumni section. It's all in quotes because, like, they did, but, like, it's just storyline purposes. Like, Jay, he's not leaving. No. Man no. needs a break. <laughs> That's yeah. what he needs. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. He's tired. <laughs> yeah. So uh we we have all elite geeks on. Uh so I'm I'm gonna focus heavy on the AEW. Um I am a collision guy mm -hmm. over dynamite and rampage. Everyone that I fuck with, everyone that I love is over on collision. And it's fantastic. Uh House of Black, FTR. I, I'm from Chicago, I'm a CM Punk boy. Uh Miro. Hobbs, Starks, all these guys that I really enjoy in AEW, they're the focal point of Collision. So um, I'm going to swallow off the bat uh, Ricky Starks opening up Collision tonight with a fire promo on CM Punk. He's not done with them. You know, he, he had the belt that he beat Ricky the Dragon Steamboat with. Tony's asking him questions. Uh, a lot of fire, a lot of heat behind that. And uh, the progression of Ricky Starks, like, I'm really happy to see it because the man's talented as shit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Katie. No, go ahead. I was trying to clear my throat. Oh, that, it's funny that you said that because on my show, um, Dynamite is leading 5-2 in the war. Um, most of the AEW fans, we are Dynamite fans because most of us are in-ring fans more than what Collision is doing. But I do appreciate what Collision is doing because you, it – differentiates the two because you have aw fans that likes the collision style and then you have us that i can appreciate both because mm -hmm. one works for the other like the dynamite it didn't work for ricky starts but collision works for ricky starts uh jay white the dynamite it wasn't really working collision works for him so it is helping those that we do want to see on tv and they're able to shine and able to elevate the only um uh, factor that I have is um, I don't think Phil should be having 30 plus minute matches and his condition. He's not ready still for those long 
those long matches. He's not ready for that. Um, even though it's, it, it ends up being good matches, but FTR always have to carry him. And it's just showing, you know, a little bit of the selfishness that he still has. So uh, that's my only thing. That's my only take from it. But he doesn't have to main event every collision and it doesn't have to be 30 plus minutes. <laughs> I'm not listen. I'm not going to disagree with you. As much as I ride for Phil, him being from Chicago and everything, and I I, I side with him on a lot of his shit. Um, I want to see Samoa Joe beat CM Punk. I don't know what it is. I love Samoa Joe. Like I love Samoa Joe more than I love some of my family members, and I don't know what it is about Samoa Joe. But I'm mad that I never got to see him hold a heavyweight title in WWE outside of NXT when he got to the main roster. That pissed me off. The whole reason, like, I I grew up on Twisted Metal, but one of the big reasons that I sat down to watch it was because Samoa Joe was playing Sweet Tooth, and I was like, I need to see this. Like, I fuck with Samoa Joe hard. That promo that he cut on AJ, Jeff Hardy, uh, all that shit, like, one of my favorite promos of all time. Like, he he is just, on the mic and in the ring, he is a fucking killer, and I respect the shit out of him. And I would, as much as I love Punk, I would love to see Punk get choked the fuck out and Samoa Joe walk away with that real world heavyweight championship yeah uh him and mjf rivalry whenever it begins it's going to be interesting very interesting yeah i'm kind of mad that he held back a little bit against ricky starks as far as on the mic though i know he wanted to say the comparison i know he wanted to but he held back and i hated that i'm like now cm punk why did you hold back but I know it was to make Ricky, you know, look like the star he is. But I hated that he held back because the way that he kind of looked at him, like, I, if I wanted to, I could, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. You lucky. <laughs> I, I fucking reek. He choked Phil out like Jody and Baby Boy. Oh my God. <laughs> he did though. <laughs> he did. Um, he did. Yeah, no. So, like I said, I, that that's kind of where I side on it. I. I, I personally like Punk. Uh, I, I was also swallowing that House of Black uh, CMFTR match. Like you said, you're right. He he. I mean, he looks like he's in better shape than he was when he first came back, and he's kind of yeah. he's getting there. And these matches are going to help him build that tolerance up to get there. However, FTR does carry a lot of these six man tag matches, which is kind of good that we're doing it in six man tag matches, and we're not doing it in you know uh, singles matches and watching them drag ass and yeah. get gassed and shit <laughs> like that. But uh, I also Love Malachi Black uh, and Buddy. Brody's all right. Like, there's something off about Brody to me. Like, I feel like Brody should be hitting dudes a lot harder than he does. Like, for a man his size, like, I'm I'm short, but I'm a big boy, right? Like, I look at this guy and I'm like, if I were you, I'd be knocking heads off motherfuckers. And I feel like you're not. And I it, it bothers me. He is. I feel not like somebody could complained be. that he was too stiff or something like that. <laughs> It's probably Phil. Yeah, somebody had was complained he? that he was too stiff. I don't, I don't know what wrestler it was, but somebody complained on him. I'm blaming Phil. Well, whoever that was has heat with me because I need that man. <laughs> I, I need him throwing lariats like JBL. Like I need you knocking heads off. Like he, that's what I need. He, I think he has the capacity to. It's just like, like Keith was saying, somebody definitely was like, oh no, he. He definitely is, he, too, he hits too hard. Yeah. Like, Calm down. It's wrestling. Chill. That's what he's Ow, supposed to do. Hurt me. <laughs> Ow, my child. Ow. Off. I was. They they do know that's what the job is, right? Like that's what the fuck you signed that's up for. Literally, what they but. what they signed contracts to do. You ju- you're know. lucky you're not in the time where The Rock was laying. 20 steel chair shots directly into the face of mankind in an empty arena oh. and throwing them downstairs and shit. You're worried about Brody hitting you too hard. But anyway, Katie, spit a swallow. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm just going to stay on collision because, again, that's the only show I watch. Uh, I'm going to swallow Hobbs and Miro. No, you, I, I'm not saying Hobbs and Shaw, that shitty little thing they decided to do to remix Fast and Furious. No, no, no. Hobbs and Miro, when I tell you this is going to be big, meaty men slap of meat, I'm so fucking excited. I love Powerhouse Hobbs. Miro is the redeemer. And this this was like, a Collision was like, you know, made for Phil. No, 
uh, Collision was made for Miro and House of Black and Statlander and like all these people who do not get <clears throat> the chance to shine because AEW has a roster of like 8,000 people. <laughs> and I've also sensed the theme that All In is going to be basically Dynamite and Rampage and All Out is basically going to be Collision is the vibe I'm getting. It is in but Chicago. That's, but that's also kind of fucked because some of the people on Collision definitely deserve to be at Wembley. Oh, I, I think they are. Um, I know probably most likely the only one or two. I think it's going to be a Bullet Club Civil War at Wembley because uh, um, Jay White and also um, David Finley been throwing shots at each other. David mm-hmm. Finley been throwing shots the whole G1 tournament. So I think it's going to be so. I know they're doing something with Impact in the UK. So I wouldn't be surprised if they show up. And I also won't be surprised if Zack Saber Jr. shows up. And of course, Will Ospreay. Oh, yeah. So bang, bang. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Bang, bang. David Finley's the son of Fit Finley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you said he's been throwing shots the entire. Uh, G Spot Climax, the only uncensored climax on Japanese television. Yes. Roger that. I gotta get my <laughs> shit in. I he's, I know. he's been saying this is the real bullet club. I'm the real bullet club leader, not the pan. Like he just been throwing his this shot. Like I revamp what the idiot has done and all of this other stuff. I mean, if we're looking at all the leaders of Bullet Club, Dave Finley probably the bottom. I'm be honest. I don't even want, I don't even fuck with Bull Club like that. But like Dave Finley's definitely at the bottom. My opinion. All right. So is uh is this like David Finley's MGK and Jay White's Eminem just pointlessly yeah. throwing shots that he can't live up to? Or because yeah, I, I, I don't do do Japan. Like it's not I stick strictly to AEW and WWE, so I can't sit here and judge david finley on his his talent or what he's doing but everything i've heard is he's not that guy to lead and call himself the leader of the bullet club to, compared to the other guys that have come before him um he's making an identity for himself being a leader at bullet club like it's different um i think the new addition that's in the bullet club in japan makes it a little bit better like we saw um uh colton last year at uh, forbidden door he's part of bullet club now and he's probably the main attraction uh, then David Finley, but um, yeah, it's he's he's getting better. I guess you gotta have patience. Uh, I know the Joshi wrestling fans on Twitter have patience with him. I still personally don't see it, but it's like uh, you're not you're try. It's like he's trying to be a Jay White in a sense, but it's just like no, we still don't take you serious. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I love that I, I made a music reference, and then the man who does the theme songs for everything Creation World and Sheely Showcase, including that awesome track that you guys heard when we started the show, uh, Justin, Heel Tactics underscore on Twitter, uh, the man behind the music who hooks us up in the chat. Go check him out. Uh, mm-hmm. Let him do some uh, Let him do some intro music for you. Let him hook you up. Um I'm with you, Katie. Big, meaty men slapping meat. That's where we were at with Hobbs and Miro. You know I love me some, like, the Redeemer gimmick. I I fucking love it. Like, he's killing it for me. I really have enjoyed Hobbs. I even tweeted out today. I'm like, Hobbs has a presence about him that they are not capitalizing on. And then immediately after I sent that tweet, he's like, I've got a book, and it's the redemption chapter, and the only way I can close this book is to call out the Redeemer. And I'm like, well, shut me the fuck up. That's exactly (laughs) what the fuck I wanted to see. Like, that's where I was at. Give me that. And they did. I mean, QT got involved, or QT's boys got involved, which is what it is. Like, fucking QT. I don't fuck with QT Marshall. It is, no, uh, me. But Miro versus Hobbs. Please, more of that. Man dropped Miro with a spine buster, laid the book on his chest, and walked out. You mean with that clean ass spine buster? Clean. It was beautiful. Oh, it's so nice. All right. Uh, I mean, I already, I already spewed love for Samoa Joe. Um, my last thing from Collision, uh, the one spit that I have from Collision, the one, the one thing I do not enjoy, 
Uh, and it's not just Collision. It's everything because this man is everywhere. Um, Avril Lavigne, uh, AEW's Avril Lavigne, the Skater Boy. Oh my! Uh, just God. being on my TV. I, I the Darby. Hey, I do not fuck with Darby. I don't. Why? I, I don't know what it is about. Like I didn't like that they paired him with Sting because he's pretty much just Jeff Hardy light. Um, I like they're like oh they fa- they paint their face so they're no that's not the same. Jeff paints his face too, but. Sting's not the daredevil like Darby is. That's where they should have gone, but they didn't have Jeff. He just he doesn't do it for me. Like I don't know what it is about him. I, I've tried to, his promos aren't great. I know people love him. I know kids like to dress up like, and I'm cool with all that. But me personally, Darby's not my guy. Plus he fumbled Gigi Dolan, so like <laughs> right there, you fucked that up big time, buddy. I don't know how the fuck you did that. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate. It. I, I'm assuming you're talking about me, but it's, you could also be talking about anyone here. So. For you. <laughs> I get that. It's it's a lot of people that don't mess with them, but they they see. I like it took me a minute for me to even start liking them, but then um, like I always discuss, even though I'm not a big on the ratings, I always pay attention to the demo chart. But um, you know, the crowd likes them. The young folks like them. That's you know, that's their generation baby face. Uh, I don't understand it, but that's. That's what they like. The Generation X, no, Generation Z. That's that's they man. I was gonna say, like, like I said, I'm 36. I'm on that cusp of like Gen X, Millennial. Like, I'm right there. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a Millennial, but I'm like right there, right? And these Gen Z kids and the shit they like, I'm 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 an old man. I'm like, no, nah, fuck you, kids. It's we not sound like our parents. Um, yep. back in my uh, day. <laughs> <laughs> see see i read the comments i didn't want to click on it <laughs> oh i'm fine with that because he does y'all watch that first season of american horror story he looks just like dude from american horror story oh my god he does look like tate i never put he it looks together just like tate from american horror story no oh. bullshit oh Ooh, now see now you ruined one of my favorite seasons of american horror story god damn it it is what it is. <sighs> disrespectful uh keeks spit or swallow because I haven't officially asked you that yet, so I, I got to at least get one in. Um, I'm a swallow. Dynamite. The whole thing. I, yes, swallow <laughs> dynamite. The whole thing. Um, let's see. Everything is starting to build. Uh, for all in. Uh, we got Young Bucks versus FTR Part Three. It's official. Uh, I can't wait for that match. Um, the match between Penta and uh. Ray Phoenix versus Moxley and uh, Claudio Gray. Um, Kenny announced that he will let us know uh, how who he's potentially going to face in all in. Of course, that's great. Curious. Uh, Jazz um, breaking up. Um, they leaving Jericho behind. Uh, Jericho looked like a proud father of all of them. He tried his best not to smile at each one of them because they did cut a great promo, all of them. They did a really good they job. Did. And I know he was really proud of them. Um, you like I could I could tell by his features he was really, really proud of them, uh, especially Daniel Garcia. <laughs> With the dance Daniel. in his face. <laughs> I love Daniel Garcia. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. I, I swallowed that segment as well. Uh, be nice. Be I am. I am. So, uh, outside of Jericho, <laughs> right? Um, we call his appreciation society uh, appreciation society. I used to call him the Jack. He'll he'll get back up. The Jericho appreciation. I, I forget, but we 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 started calling him the Jassholes because save big money at Menards. And uh, Cool Hand, whatever the fuck his name, like, I didn't like them when they were in WWE. I didn't like them here. Like, they don't do it for me. Um, same thing with Jack Swagger. Um, can't can't do it. Anna and Tay, though, they came in. Tay's like, I'm going to come back from having this baby. I'm going to be a champion without you. And Anna's like, it's my time to be selfish. Like, we sat here. We rode for you. Like, it's my time. Like, I was with all of that. I agree. He did look like a proud father, even though – Outside of those two women and Daniel Garcia, personally, I don't think he has much to be proud of in that group. Uh, just for what I enjoy in wrestling, just me personally. 
just me personally. <laughs> that's what I really want. Amazing. However, um, between the JAS, between um, everything that he did before that to these, these two groups and the people that he's groomed and worked with, Proud and Powerful is supposedly coming back soon. Um, they got their shit cleared up, so that's happening as well. Um, he's done a lot of good. I mean, everything he did with Max, he, he he has put a lot of people over. He's doing his announcement next week for uh, whether or not he's joining the Callis family, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I swallowed, I, I agree, I swallowed the end of the JAS um, and everyone going their own ways and on to bigger and better things, hopefully. Maybe. At least for three yes. um to those that's watching uh jericho did when jericho was in japan he did uh mentor tana uh to takashka or soup as i call it cinnabon god so <laughs> it is something in that but i've been thinking what's gonna happen is don Callis gonna be like oh you know what never mind and then will osprey ends up attacking him from behind or something yeah, but like that's probably gonna lead to like Jericho and Osprey at all in. And I'm gonna yeah. be honest, I don't want to see that match. I want Osprey. Fuck it, I'll take an Osprey Kenny three or whatever four, or whatever type of match number that would be, because that match. Because if if Tony Khan wants to, as they're billing us the best wrestling show in wrestling or whatever the fuck they're naming it. You need to have these high, like, caliber matches. And, yeah, like, Jericho's name is bigger than Kenny's. But in ring, Kenny and Osprey mesh together so much better. Um, That's not happening. I'm going to tell you why. Because that's a New Japan match. And it's only fair. They're going to have that. But they're going to have it at Wrestle Kingdom, the last mm. one. So okay. you don't want to, you know, you build a relationship with New Japan. You kind of don't. You want to make a men still. So if they probably want that at Wrestle Kingdom and not all in, that's probably why. Uh, also to give more background into why the Osprey and Jericho is happening. When, like I said, when Jericho was in New Japan, he raised up Osprey, but you know, he always used to give Osprey the cold shoulders. So, and if you look back at Jericho's matches when he um from 95 all the way to 2000, you see the similarities between Osprey and also young Jericho. And Osprey always kind of looked up to Jericho as far as a wrestler. So it's probably more of a dream match for Osprey, um, just to get it out the way. Because all in 2018, that's all it was about, like just fantasy booking. It was just one big fantasy booking extravaganza. So that's that's all it is uh, for yeah. all in. And I agree with what you said, and I, I get that. I get. I absolutely could see the uh, correlation between Jer a young Jericho and Osprey, and why Osprey would want that match. So, um, fuck it, why not? Yeah, just a little, you know. I faced Osprey because uh, we're getting closer to, you know, because um, Jericho. I believe he has probably one more year on his contract, either one more year or two. And we never know, he might end up hanging the boots as well. So I think he just probably want to get all his, the way that he's been going, I feel like he's getting all, you know, checking up the, the marks of what he's done in his career. Okay. Oh, you mean with the identity crisis thing where he's like, I'm the lion tamer and then I'm the pain maker and then I'm the- Oh, you talking about the reinvention king, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, he's been running through all of his gimmicks over recently, probably playing the greatest hits on his, like you said, on his farewell tour. Like, that's what you do. So, yeah. no, I'm with that. Yeah. Uh, Katie, spit a swallow. Uh, I'm going to swallow uh, Willow and Statlander, even though they lost. But, like, them as a tag team is something I can get behind. I don't know, like, what the plan is. I mean, it seems like it's going to be, like, Stat and Martinez for the title. But if they do want to go to, like, Willow versus stat after the fact i'd be so down for that match just because the two of them are fantastic they're probably two of the most over women that you have <clears throat> that of course you don't really utilize as much as you need to um and just like the presence alone the two of them have and together it just just more just more of both of them together separate in general that's that's all i want 
Um, so I, I missed that match on Collision because Zoe was fighting me for half an hour to go to bed uh, before I actually got her down. Uh, so that tag match, who did they? Uh, who did Stat and Willow wrestle? Uh, Mercedes and Diamante. Diamante, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right, that's right. I did hear that because I know Diamante's hat. Listen, <laughs> I have said before that Mercedes looks like someone who likes to peg her men. Like she looks like she has a strap on ready and she take like, that's just the vibe I get. I don't know. Um, I, I, I would have a hard time fighting her on that because I think she might kick my ass. Like she looks like she could take me. It is what it is. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do remember seeing that now because Diamante's having a match coming up either on dynamite or rampage, a singles match too. Right. Um, her and Willow's next week on collision. Yeah. Okay. On collision. All right. Um, there are things from Dynamite that I do enjoy. Uh, one of them, uh, in my personal opinion, the best thing going on Dynamite right now is Max and Adam. So I am swallowing everything MJF and Adam Cole. Uh, whether it's uh, them skipping going to the bar and meeting women to go to the trampoline park and MJF taking his frustrations out on children in a dodgeball game. Um <laughs> It's MJF coming out in front of a Midwest crowd and saying that the video of him saying that the Midwest is mid was heavily edited and not real. Um, <laughs> and it's his favorite place in the U S to the jealousy of Roddy strong over the bond that they've had and him embracing the kingdom because he, he's hurt and left out that Adam wants to win tag titles with it. Dude, you, you're in a fucking neck brace. Like, <laughs> you gonna let him yeah. be like that? <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't go to the dude in a neck brace to be like, let's go win tag team title. Like, fix your neck and we'll talk. And I understand how your neck got hurt, and I can see why you're a little bitter about that. However, sometimes you gotta let your friends make friends, man. Like, it is what it is. And he ran into the kingdom's arms, and we'll see how that goes. Um, we are getting. That match, and Adam has somehow convinced MJF to wrestle twice in one night. He will be on the opening of the show facing Aussie Open for the ROH tag team titles because they mean a lot to Adam. And then after they either win or lose those titles, they will go on to main event, more than likely, uh, for the AEW Championship one-on-one. Also... I love that he's like Max just went in on Roddy and Adam kind of got pissed at him, but he's like, why don't you go in the back, cry, get in your car, go home, turn on some Taylor Swift. You bland bitch. Like that whole fucking thing had me die. Mm, I was just like, um, Adam, Adam, uh, Cole is kind of poking the devil. Uh, he's poking him. Uh, so MJF is a he's kind of ticking, his nerves is getting bad, like you kind of pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> so now, uh, Deuce Zeus's and Poking the Devil are two options <laughs> for a title. Do you need me to write these down? Yes, please, because you know I forget. Um, <laughs> oh, also, real quick, Max is like, Oh, do you want to do a promo battle? and I was like, No, 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 and he's like. You're so skinny, pale, and frail that Hulk Hogan would have snorted you in the 80s. I lost my shit. Like, I lost my shit. Because fuck Hulk Hogan. That's, that's well, how we feel about Hulk Hogan. Over well, here. yeah. Um, fuck Hulk Hogan, 100%. Is what it is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, the whole thing was great. I, there's, there's a lot of interesting things about this. So, again, I didn't watch. I've just seen bits and pieces of like this pa- the past two weeks. But there's a lot of interesting stuff they're doing with this. Like having Roddy being consoled by the Kingdom, which was Adam Cole's group before, and like I talked about it a few weeks ago when Adam Cole hugged MJF and did like the stab in the back motion, the same thing he did to Roddy back in NXT, and it's just little stuff that they're doing on both ends. Like and like you said, M- uh, Adam's kind of like you know poking at the devil a little bit, like poking at MJF to see if he does tick it's it's gonna be one of those things where they're gonna lose the tag title match because there's no fucking reason for them to win 
and then they're going to get to the main event, and then that's when some one of them is going to turn, and they're kind of leaving it up to, like, last-minute chance of who it could be, because either one could turn on either one at this point, and either one would be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be more dramatic if it was Adam Cole. I agree. That's what I said. Because everyone mm. expects MJF to be the one. Yeah. Let like let this be in his life the one sincere moment where he actually made a friend and he actually tried to be better. And Adam's the one that turns. And then when he goes back to being an asshole, he has a reason. Like he actually opened up to somebody and they stabbed him in the back. So now when the devil is back to being who he is. We all see why. Because, like, the sob stories about getting picked on and being called Jubal, like, all that's great, right? That, that, that's fun, but we don't witness that. But watching him be betrayed by, like, the one person he really, truly seems to care about mm-hmm. out of our eyes, that would be fantastic. I know you love Adam Cole and you don't want him to be the bad guy here, Katie, but... I like hey, him as a heel, Katie. Uh, hey, I... He's up here chilling. He's fine with whatever <laughs> happens. He's he's JJ chilling. He's good. I'm all right with whatever happens. I love Adam Cole as both a heel and a face. Just more Adam Cole. Uh, earlier, we talked about Patreon. And I want to, again, tell everyone, if you are checking out this show, we do have a Patreon. And you can watch an ad-free version of the show for just a slightly higher tier uh, than that $1 tier we talked about earlier. Uh, but if you are watching us live, we do have sponsors and we need to give them some time. So we ask that you check out these ads. You support our sponsors. They are fantastic and very much in line with the theme of the show, uh, as you will see here uh, as we give Travis the spotlight. It's things up in the bedroom. Then it's time to check out Adam and Eve. Did you see Adam and Eve is the leading adult toy store that offers a wide range of products to help you explore your sexual desires. Whether you're looking for something to use solo or with a partner, they have everything you need to satisfy your cravings. From vibrators to lingerie, bondage gear to lubricants, adamandeve.com has it all. And the best part, you can shop with confidence knowing that all their products are of high quality and backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means whether you bought a dildo, sex swing, penis ring, vibrator, anal sex toy, bondage toy, couples toy, lube, or accessory, you can get a refund within 90 days if you're not 100% satisfied. No questions asked. And right now, as a special offer to our listeners, Adam and Eve is giving you 50% off almost any item on their website. That's right, 50% off. And if you act now, you'll also get free shipping. So go to adamandeve.creationworld.com and use the offer code erotica at checkout. That's erotica at adamandeve.creationworld.com for 50% off almost any item and free shipping. Don't wait. This offer won't last very long. The link is in the description. Attention dog lovers. Are you looking for high quality products to spoil your furry friend? Then you need to check out dog.com. Because you see, dog.com is the go-to online store for all your dog-related needs. They offer a huge selection of dog food, treats, beds, and more. Plus, they have products for all types of dogs, from puppies to seniors and everything in between. And the best part? You can shop with confidence knowing that all their products are made with your dog's health and happiness in mind. Dog.com only stocks top-rated brands that you can trust, so you can rest easy knowing your dog is getting the best. And right now, as a special offer to our listeners, Dog.com is doing a big warehouse clearance sale. And all you have to do is go to dog.creationworld.com, and you can get up to 80% off on all sorts of items like toys, treats, bones, harnesses, bowls, leashes, and anything else you can think of. So go to dog.creationworld.com and take advantage of this sale right now. Spoil your furry friend with the best products from dog.creationworld.com today. Link is in the description. Are you tired of feeling sluggish and unfocused throughout the day? Then it's time to try Dubby, the ultimate energy source. Dubby is a powerful, clean energy drink that is designed to help you stay alert and focused no matter what life throws your way. Whether you're a student, a busy professional, an athlete, or especially a gamer, 
Dummy can give you the boost you need to take on the day or the night. It also contains important aminos and vitamins that canned energy drinks simply don't have. And the best part, Dubby is made with high quality ingredients and is completely sugar free, maltodextrin free, and is keto friendly. So you can enjoy the energy boost without any of the crash jitters or angst that comes with traditional energy drinks. Simply mix Dubby with water and you'll have a delicious refreshing energy drink that can help you power through your entire day. And with a variety of flavors to choose from, including Galaxy Grenade, Beach and Peach, and Dragonade, you're sure to find one that you love. So go to w.creationworld.com and order your Dubby today. And for a limited time, use code CREATIA at checkout to get 10% off your order. That's CREATIA at w.creationworld.com for 10% off. Try Dubby today and feel the difference. The link is in the description. And uh, a reminder for everyone who uh, is taking notes, if collars and leashes are your thing in the bedroom, the deal at dog.com is better than the one at Adam and Eve for those things specifically. So I showed multi-purpose. Code erotica. <laughs> Absolutely, code erotica. I got an order on the way. I've, I've used it a few times. Uh, it should be here tomorrow, actually. Because uh, now they just text me and they say, hey, Here's some more deals for you. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's see what you got. I'm like, here's a deal, and then another deal, and another one. Yeah, I mean, ladies get the rose with the rock. I, I don't know, Reek. I feel a little bit of uh, sympathy for him, despite calling Brian Pillman's mother a crackhead. Um, I do. <laughs> he did do that on TV. He, he said some he, things. He, he has said, said many a thing. He said, he said a lot some terrible things. Um. <clears throat> Katie, you'll enjoy this. Even though I'm not a big fan of Beethoven, I am swallowing Jack Perry versus RVD and the story that they are starting to tell where Taz is just on commentary like, fuck him. It sounds like he's got some shit planned. We may be seeing some more ECW originals showing up to try and take that FTW belt off of Jack. I don't know where this is going. I, probably leading back to a rematch with Hook uh, down the road. But uh, I, I'm starting to get into this. I'm starting, like I said, I didn't love I, I didn't love the entrance and the presentation, and it kind of threw me for a loop. But I'm starting to get into the story of what they're doing, and I got to see RVD wrestle Jack Perry, and I. I, I mean, uh, yeah. I don't fuck with Matt Riddle, but I love me some RVD. <laughs> well, yeah, because RVD is our kind of way people. Thank Matt you. Riddle is not. It's just facts. Um. I'm with you on the swallowing the um, RVD and a uh, Jack Perry match. Um, RVD look, he looked great. Everything was still crisp. Everything's still there. We know he's a little older, but he did a great, great job. Uh, shout out to Jack Perry. He did a great job protecting that veteran. That's always key is protecting the vet in the ring. And he did a great job doing that. So it, it, was, it was really great. Swallowing it. Don't fight me today. Bitter swallow. Um, just because it keeps showing up on my timeline on Twitter, uh, I'm, I'm well, I'm swallowing EO Sky in general, but because she she hits a double drop kick and then nips up and then does it again, it looked like she took like four Monster Energy drinks back to back real quick and was just like hyped up. I keep seeing it, and it's so entertaining. So just that part alone, and the fact that EO's, you know, our champion on SmackDown. Like I was listen. I, I was fortunate enough to be in the arena to watch the very first ever women's war games. I got to see her come off the top of that cage in that trash can. Uh, I have loved EO for a while. It's nice to see her get her flowers. I hate the fact that. They do Bianca Dirty every SummerSlam for some reason. Yeah. It's kind of fucked up. But at yeah. the same time, I was really happy for EO to see her get that shine. Uh, I still need to find out where the fuck Shotzi is and why she hasn't you know, shown up to handle some business uh, with that shaved head. She's around with scissors. Uh, she did chase Bailey off a couple weeks ago, but like she didn't stop the cash in. She didn't. I, I, I'm gonna need to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need my girl Shotzi to show up and uh, handle some business here. So, 
I mean, also a big shout out to Dakota Kai who found out like day of that she needed to be in Detroit and hopped on a plane and got there right as um, Drew and Gunther was ending. Yeah. Like that's yeah. that's a real one. Keeks, spit or swallow? Uh, I'm going to spit and swallow uh, if, if it's possible on um, Shayna Baszler. Um, I'm going to swallow Shayna Baszler because I like her. And I'm going to spit on the match, though. Um, it, I think they, that should have been a cage match. Oh, it yeah. Been a cage MMA style type of match. Um, but I do want to give Ronda her flowers because it is true. If she wasn't present in WWE, that main event wouldn't have never happened. Uh, Cause we know it was for her name. So that's my flowers given to her. I'm not going to totally, totally shit on that match, but Shayna didn't deserve that, but I think it should have been in a cage match, but hopefully now we can get the badass Shayna Baszler that I've been wanting for a while since she got out of NXT. Absolutely. And not just a cage match. Like, we've got the fight pit. We've got mm -hmm. the lion's den from back in the day with Shamrock. Like, you could bring some shit back and do some cool shit, and you just opted not to do it, and I don't understand why. Because WWE hates me and wouldn't give me a cage match live, because God forbid. Um, I will say the fans definitely ruined that match like the match itself was subpar at best because it's it was mma rules and again you would typically think of that being in like a fight pit or a cage uh but the fans two minutes into a five minute match chanting this is boring just pisses me off it's like they got them they got a spot on the card and some of your favorites didn't and you're not liking it tough shit i fucking can't stand ronda rousey and i was not chanting this is boring yeah, yeah. like no fuck stuff. right off stupid fucking fans see detroit got issues i got many issues with detroit i'm never going back uh, and this is why we don't go out here anyway <laughs> yeah like y'all got a pay-per-view after However many years since Mania 23, and this is what y'all do? Uh, they're not going back. Fuck y'all. I'm not going WWE back. fans filled up that stadium more than they went to go see the Lions. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you absolutely can do what you just did. You can spit uh, an aspect of something and swallow another. Uh, if you're kind of in the middle on something, but you still want to talk about it, we, we say gargle undecidedly. So you got that option too. Uh, I'm actually about to do the same thing you did. So I'm swallowing the fact that we had women main eventing both Dynamite and Rampage this week. We main evented with Sheeta versus Anna J with Sheeta going over. We also main evented with Soraya versus Sky Blue, which is a match you could put on any show, and I will tune in to watch those two in the ring every single time. Uh, I don't care how bad the in-ring is. I'm tuning in and I'm watching. Uh but it wasn't, and Sky Blue has really improved, and I have been very impressed with her also. Support the locals. You know, she is from Chicago, um, and I have been a fan of Paige slash Soraya forever. Um, fighting with my family, I love that movie. I, I've been watching her through NXT and WWE and everything that she's come through and all of that. Uh, you can find some stuff of her in the same place you can find some stuff from us uh, on certain websites, um, unfortunately for her. <laughs> Uh, because th she did not submit that stuff there like we do. Right. Um, the spit part is the fact that they decided that the AEW Women's Champion had to qualify in a match to defend her title, and Tony Storm got the bye instead of the champion. So she had to defend her title to get into the Fatal Four. It doesn't fucking makes sense to me like i get they want to do the women's fatal four-way cool whatever but the the convoluted idea behind the whole thing <clears throat> was she to having to defend that belt to get into a match to defend her belt just it didn't make sense to me huh. yeah i'm gonna have to spit on that too um i've already spit on the lineup of it i was just like okay i got the story i got i understood that because it's gonna be in the uk 
I've been stressing it before. I'm like, okay, we need a break from Britt Baker. But, of course, I know she's going to be added to this match. Mm-hmm. But please don't do what I think you're going to do. Please let she to retain the championship. Please do not have her drop it for a moment because it's not going to make sense. So Yeah. Like, the, the whole the, – the, Listen, Tony Khan and I got to have a conversation because this women's division, you have an entire roster of women who can go and kick ass and can be a presence, but you utilize the same three people and they get stale. It's like it's the John Cena effect. You continuously shove them down our throats and people get sick of it. Um, but like I know Jamie Hayter was definitely supposed to be in this match in some way, shape or form if she wasn't hurt. Which again sucks that Jamie Hayter's hurt for the Wembley show in the UK. So having like Brit be in there and Sheeta, and the fact again, the fact that Sheeta had to fucking have a qualifying match is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. That makes zero sense. You're gonna have the former champion get the buy. It the logic isn't there. He's he's you know, snorting the same thing Hulk Hogan was back then. Like, clearly, things aren't lining up for my guy. Like, it's it's stupid. I don't understand, like, how uh, you, you book the women the way you book the men. Like, would you do this to the men? No, then don't do it to the women. It's, it's a very simple concept, but now that you know that. You're right. You're yeah. right. I've been, I've, I've been saying my stuff, my criticism, but I know it's going to turn out to be a great match, but it oh, yeah. can be better. It can be better. That because that didn't make when it when I'm like, why is she qualifying if she is the champion? I said that I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, whatever. Fuck we both. <laughs> but Tony get Tony who lost the belt gets a bye because she lost the belt and she's ranked number two. So she gets she doesn't have to qualify, but the champion does. It, anyway. Yeah, on a ranking system that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, sounds about right. It could have just been a Qualifying match to face the women's title for all out. If they was going to do it like that, would have made more sense. But what do I? That's too smart for Tony Khan Keeks. That's too smart. You 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 got any more, Katie? Um, I have one that I can think of off the top of my head. Go ahead. Um, because. Uh, it's a it's a swallow. Uh, everything with Rhea and Lyra on NXT. Oh my Get God, out it, of my head! I'm literally it, looking no. right at that in my notes. No, motherfucker, you knew if I didn't watch wrestling, I watched that. Come on, now <laughs> it's me. It's Rhea and it's NXT, and I love Lyra too. I love the fact that Rhea put the beat into Lyra in their match a few weeks ago and that gave Lyra backbone and she called out Rhea and kicked her in the face and I like that Rhea is I mean they're not going to do anything for her on the main roster might as well let her just go to NXT and fuck around a little like goddamn, mm-hmm. she's at least getting well now everyone's jumping Rhea on Raw which I mean again gives us something but I like the fact that she is still going to NXT and like hanging out with where she built herself as what she came to be now and Lyra is one of like probably top five girls you have down there right now so that's putting a lot of stock into Lyra by having Rhea go like toe to toe with her so I love all that shit I've got something I'm going to send you Katie so you'll have another one because I know this would be on your list if you had seen it (laughs) okay because I know you he does know um, it's true. While we're on the subject of NXT, as an Italian from Chicago, I am swallowing my boy, the Don of NXT, Tony D'Angelo, and Stax, the tag team champions. Now, I don't give a fuck about Schism. I feel bad, you know, <laughs> for Ava Rain having to be a part of Schism and all that bullshit. But the fact that they were just beating the shit out of dudes and then they got to my boys and they're like, well, maybe we'll hold off a minute. They came down, they saved Ivy, who was, you know, getting jumped on her own. Mm. Didn't have the creeds there to back her up. All of that. Love it. Give me more of the Don of NXT and my boy Stax on my TV. Always going to be a swallow. And they did the whole thing where they brought in Santos as the sixth man, which was like he showed up, 
tag team. They won the six man. That whole thing was just mwah. beautiful. Beautiful. Geeks, spit or swallow. I want to swallow Rey Mysterio becoming a U.S. champion. <laughs> I did not see that coming, but yay. <laughs> What's wrong with Rey? Rey Mysterio got the same treatment like Royal Rumble when he came out at number 30, but on the timeline. <laughs> like, so here's the thing. Like, okay, you need to chill the fuck out, Reek. First off, uh, <laughs> see, see, I love Reek. Reek's one of my boys. He's gonna be on the next show with me. I However, say, for what, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I have informed Reek that he is no longer allowed to watch Goodfellas or The Godfather because he keeps disrespecting the Don of NXT. Uh, for whatever reason, he's just not on board like he should be. I don't know how you can love me and not love Tony. It is what it is. We're basically <laughs> the same person. Basically. Um. I, I much would have rather seen Santos be the one to take that belt off. Like, I don't think Ray needs the U.S. title. You know, like that. That's just where I was with it. Like, and then I saw I was talking to Kenny on Twitter, and he's like, "Well, maybe you know, they're leaning towards having like a little uh, competitiveness, or maybe an issue between Santos and Ray now that Ray's champion." And it's like, you're doing that with Judgment Day. You're doing that with the Bloodline. Yeah. You don't need to do that with the LWO too. Like we yeah. don't need every faction that exists. I know I froze. I saw it. I was like this. Um, <laughs> we don't need every faction that exists in WWE to have issues at the exact same fucking time. Like, I, I, I just don't need that. Um, I would have loved to see Santos get that win. So I didn't need to see Ray win a U.S. title. Like, it, it's not like Sheamus who needed the IC title to get his grand slam. And I'd love to, I'd love that for him and his career. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so seeing Austin theory lose is a swallow. Cause, <laughs> yeah. but I would have rather had it be Santos and it, it sucked that they, they beat him up. They took him out twice. Ray filled in and he didn't get that moment, but we'll see where it goes. We'll see. They probably going to do end up doing that too. Uh, a Santos versus Ray Mysterio. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Um, I, where am I at here on these notes? Do I think I've still got, we did Lyra, we did Schism. And, oh, the new day is back, ladies and gentlemen, which is a huge swallow. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston show up on Monday Night Raw, beat up the Viking Raiders, Happy moment for everybody because fuck those guys too. I don't care if they if I look like I could be the third member of that group. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> like literally, if there was an evolution chart and you stuck me between the two guys, it would just be like boom, boom, boom. But anyway, um, you know, happy to see Kofi and Xavier back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, that was something else I could have brought up in news rumors and I forgot until now that uh, Biggie physically said he feels fine. But the doctors are kind of pushing for him to, you know, maybe not wrestle again. Uh, so, I mean, it is going to essentially come down to Big E's decision and just, like, more testing and stuff. But I forgot he did say that, like, the day before SummerSlam, which fucking sucks. But if we can get Big E on commentary every week, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. Neck injuries is nothing to... It's hard. Yeah. But we've also seen a lot of people come back from them. It just, it, like, it took Austin how long? Almost 20 Edge. years. Uh, Edge, same thing. Paige, or Soraya, same thing. Like, this isn't something that you just come back from quickly. This is something that, you know, it takes some time. It may be years before we see Biggie back in the ring. We may see him sit down at the commentary table. And that's a nice consolation prize because we still get him on our TVs fantastic on the mic and entertaining as all shit but we all know where we want to see him and hopefully one day uh he is physically able to do so and we get to see that again yeah. what is samoa joe also had a neck injury too i think so i think, it I, think I think that's why he dropped the uh nxt title the yeah. second yeah. on it. 
But I don't think it was the same thing that everyone else had with like the oh, surgery. Yeah. The okay. yeah, I don't that think movie. it was to that extent. I know no. I, it wasn't neck injury, but I don't. His know thing was concussions, like Daniel. Oh, Bryan. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah. He had You're concussion right. issues, like Daniel Bryan did. Um, mm-hmm. and that's why they were going easy on that. Uh, Katie, you, you got you got a swallow? Yeah. Oh my god, crazy! Like I thought of one, and you're never gonna believe it. Um, I like saw this too, and I forgot about it. Uh, I'm swallowing. Chad fucking Gable, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, he did win that fatal four way and will face Gunther. Hopefully, that's a payback because if I get to see that shit live, I'm going to be ecstatic. <coughs> um, but I'll, I'll read this as Matt has wrote it, uh, just Uh-oh. for fun. You don't have to, but okay. Oh no, no, just just for funsies. Let's let's see here. Um, Swallow, Chad defeat Rico, uh, Ricochet, Riddle and Ciampa for a shot at Gunther, Kaiser Rule tries to seduce Maxine with his supreme uh, supremacy gimmick, but starts talking bad about Otis and gets slapped, Otis makes the challenge, and Kaiser accepts, those are all of Matt's notes for that. And there's always a fuck Matt Riddle in there that I just don't put in the notes, but it, Oh, well, yeah, fuck Matt Riddle. Hashtag he shouldn't, he shouldn't have been in the match uh, in the first place. Like, why the fuck is he getting another oppor- like a chance at another opportunity? I agree. They just put him somewhere. They, I think they're they don't jail for him anymore. Um, I, nice on him. I have to swallow our Lord and Savior Cody Rhodes and his promo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said his mama told him that Brock acknowledged him uh, at SummerSlam. Uh, said he can beat anyone in the world, and Seth comes down and feels like th- that was his cue. Like he-, he took that personally, even though Cody has beat him. Uh, Seth wants to prove he can beat Cody, and he wants to do it tonight. But Judgment Day just can't let anyone else have the spotlight. So Finn starts shit with Seth while Damian and them are out there. Finn didn't even clear it with anybody. He just showed the fuck up and started shit. And they're like, hey, what the fuck is that? Now him and Damian are having their issues back and forth. Shit's going on there. Uh, Sammy runs down because he had nothing better to do, but he had to get taken out because, as Katie said, he had you know that giant. He's got big balls on his elbow. Um, <laughs> Just one. Shinsuke filled in for him. Now maybe we'll be getting Shinsuke versus Seth. They kind of teased that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, uh, I love me, Cody. I cannot wait. I'm pissed they didn't already do it. I don't think that anything that we just watched with the bloodline needed to have the universal title attached to it. We should have just put that belt on Cody at WrestleMania 39 and been done with it. However, we'll get to 40, let him do his thing, finish the story, beat Roman, take the belt, and see where he takes us. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's where we that's all that's where all are we you, have. Are you, not, are you not are you not Cody fan? Never that's okay. I've, I've I've always been a friend of, of his brother, Dustin. Mm-hmm. Listen, we had Katie is the only person that's ever heard this, but we had an entire episode. We call it the Lost episode. It was episode twenty. It is like it's cursed, like the tag team belts. Like I recorded it, I uploaded it. Travis swears to God he can't not get like the file wouldn't open or he couldn't find it. He never saw it. I saw it in the Dropbox, but he couldn't. So then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do this thing where I'm gonna play this episode and I'm gonna have Katie and Reek on and I let them listen to it. And then we'll just post the reaction of them listening to this episode. And you'll be able to hear the audio and you'll still see us listening to the episode because it's it was a thing for a while. Yeah, the audio never played on the video that we recorded so nobody could hear. It was just our reactions. I don't know what was up with that recording, but it is <laughs> cursed. However, in that recording, I talk about how I wanted to see Dustin Gold Dust at the time because uh, it was right around the time... Uh, we recorded when he made like his big return to WWE and he was on fire there for a minute. How I always wanted to see him win the championship since his daddy never did, uh, which is kind of where we're at with Cody now. And I, I put Goldust over big as someone I'd like to see win that title when he came back and he was on fire. Yeah, um, it it's going to happen, but we got to remember that Vince McMahon never liked a daddy like that. And it's always been fuck Rose on his behalf i mean you you're listening to a whole diss for crying out loud every time he come out is this in the uh, no highs is this in the flares is this in the mcmahon's like yeah you'll get the However, belt, but they 
Triple H is still on his get back right now. He don't forget the damn chair shot. Oh, no, he doesn't. He ain't forget that. Say, however, right now, Vince is laid up in a hospital with spinal <laughs> surgery and an indictment shoved straight up his ass, so he might not be back in creative anytime soon. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I, I really enjoy Cody versus Brock. I, I love me some Cody and what he's been doing. I, I said he didn't really win me over until – right as he was about to leave AEW, the, there was a turn there. It's not because he was leaving AEW. It was near the end of his AEW run. He started turning me around on him uh, with what he was doing. Like, the stuff he was doing prior to that, I really wasn't feeling early on in AEW. It's the it same felt like thing. It, 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 it's not, though. Like, there's yes, something a little... Because what he was doing in AEW early on felt like it was disjointed from the rest of the show. Like, it felt like... Here was AEW Dynamite, and then here was the 15-minute Cody segment that didn't fit with the rest of the show. Now he fits in with what he's doing in WWE. Everything he's doing fits and flows with the rest of the show because that's who he's always been. And I feel like he kind of started fitting that mold of what AEW wanted to do a little bit more when Tony took that booking power away from him and said, I'm just going to book all the shows now. So he kind of had to conform, and that's when – he started flowing a little better to me with that show, and then he moved to WWE doing that thing, but it's very much a WWE thing, and it works. Whereas before, he just felt out of place on Dynamite for me. So, mm, it's, the, it's the same thing, and I say that because, yes, I did enjoy the Brock and the Cody match, but that also was the same thing that he did when it was Cody versus Brody, um, Brody Lee. Um same way Brody Lee kicked his ass the same exact way for that TNT championship, and that's how he ended up winning. Um, as far as promo-wise, it is the same thing. Um, he gave the same type of format. My daddy, I do it for this. I love wrestling. Tears. Um, I love my mama. Uh, <laughs> like, we, everything that y'all getting, and I'm, I'm like, it's gonna be a time they're gonna get sick of the same shit when he come out there. We dealt with that 2018, 19, 20, up until he left. It's the same shit. But it works because I mean it's an entertainment company. It works. And then I know not you, but I know a lot, they like it because he did move over there. And I'm just yeah. like, y'all, it's the if you pay if y'all hated him for doing this shit over here, he's doing the same stuff. It's just now he has somebody that can tell him what he can and can't do. So that's True. the only difference. But it's the same type of format. My daddy, I ain't never win this. My mama, my daughter, tears. What you want to talk about? <laughs> I love Cody's trying not to cry face, though. It's my favorite. <laughs> uh, Katie, you're all out, right? Yes, sir. Keith, you got anything else you want to spit a swallow this week? Uh, no. All right. I will close this out then. Uh, the last thing, I'm swallowing Edge wanting to be, uh, for the first time ever, facing Sheamus one-on-one -on -one, uh, next week. Um, yeah. So they did that on SmackDown. Edge came out, said he's never had a singles match with Sheamus. They did the whole thing where... Sheamus is the one that led him to realizing that maybe his neck wasn't as fucked up as he thought it was and he could come back uh, by doing the workout thing with him and falling off the bike and all that. And They had a little bit of, of a love fest and kind of a mutual respect thing, but took shots at each other as well. And uh, Edge versus Sheamus next week is going to bang, so I'm, I'm all for that. They sure have not faced each other. Not in the singles. Dang. Sheamus going to turn him crazy. up. Uh, I I always ask a question at the end of the show, and I already think I know the answer. But Keeks, what was the what was your favorite show you watched this week? Dynamite. Katie only watched Collision. <laughs> uh, my answer is Collision because it's the only show I actually physically watched. And I am also going to go with Collision because Collision always gives me the most of what I want in my wrestling. Like all the people that I really enjoyed down in NXT. Alistair Black in NXT was my guy. Like it was him and Bray Wyatt for me in WWE. So having him over there and having him featured is big. FTR is a fantastic tag team. They're gonna have a great match with the Bucks. Um, it, they're, they're always gonna tear it down. Um, I love me some Miro. I, 
And then the AEW guys that are over there, the Hobbs, the Starks, like you said, Chris Statlander, all of that. I love all of them. So AEW Collision gives me a lot of everything that I love about wrestling, period. So most weeks it's going to be my favorite show. You know uh, what it reminds me of? Uh, WWF uh, Sunday Night Heat. A little bit. A That's little bit. what it reminds me of the more I look at it. I can see that. Yeah, because as especially when Sunday Night Heat first came on, they were really pushing it and they were doing some cool shit on there too. Mm-hmm. Like you had some big stars doing some shit, and they always had the little WWF New York tie-in too. Yes. They need but, to get uh, back to the New York Times. They need to get oh. Mm-hmm. Get that restaurant back. Mm-hmm. Another one of Vince's <laughs> failed business ventures. But uh <laughs> Keeks, thank you so much for joining us. I had a blast. I hope you did too. And if you did, we will absolutely have you back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Maybe we'll see if we can get the whole Public Enemies crew, or at least you and Graham. or um, We'll work something out, but uh, absolutely have you back. Please plug what uh, you have going on with all the keeks and everything uh, you want to plug for Public Enemies. Yes, um, you can catch me every Monday on live um, during Raw. It's around 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock Central Time. Um, I'm out for two weeks because I will be on my vacation. Um, but you can catch me back again uh, for the all in review. It will be me and CJ. Of course, it's going to be live on uh, Monday on the Public Enemies YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, All Elite with Keeks. Also on Instagram, same handle. And also on TikTok. I'm barely on there, but I'm on there. Uh, AE Keeks one. Uh, but yeah, so shout out. You can every Monday live. I'm on here. She's All fantastic. Here. Please go check her out. Especially if you're an AW fan. I don't know how you're not already watching her. So go check her out. Katie. Yes, sir. You haven't had to do this in a little while. You you remember your you remember your thing? <clears throat> yes, I do. You can follow me on Twitter at Katie Rasson13. The link tree in my bad to Gal Things She Lead Showcase. Twitch.tv slash Sheila Showcase, typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. YouTube.com slash Sheila Showcase. Watch the videos because they're way more entertaining. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, if you want to listen. I may have been on vacation, but I was also putting up content. I put up my interview with the lovely Miss Keeks down here, as well as the one with Kate from Fightful. Uh, I will be trying to hit up SRS this week, see if I can get an interview with him. That's going to be amazing if I can. I'll keep y'all updated because that shit's going to be hysterical. Uh, and a SummerSlam vlog will be up uh, probably tomorrow. So, And you can catch us in uh, roughly 39 minutes for getting <laughs> off to, uh, with Reek, who's already in the chat, ready to go. Uh, will uh, and our boy Just from the Get Show podcast. We are doing uh, your top five essential horror classic slashers ranked so we got psycho texas chainsaw massacre halloween friday 13th and a nightmare on elm street we'll each be ranking our personal top or our personal uh one through five of those movies breaking it down and discussing it and that will be like i said in uh 38 minutes from now well you guys can always find me on twitter at matt ritter also uh i finally broke down and decided to use fucking instagram after i've been against it for so long so you can follow me on instagram threads and tiktok at smacking it raw and on Twitter for your horror content at Getting Off and everything Creation World at It's Creation World, I T S C R E A T I A World. That's Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that. That'll get you everything you want from Creation World, not just my shit. So please go check that out as well. For Miss Katie Kinsey Bay Bay and all the geeks, I am the patron saint of podcast and the Warden Mad Ritter. And this has been your number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. <laughs>